good morning. My name is Praniti Sinha. I'm a junior here at Gunn High School, and I'm the president of Gunn Asha. Today I'd like to be telling you about something I experienced 13 years ago when I was just five years old. It's always um, stuck to me, and I want to talk about it to you today. This is me when I was five years old. I went to India with my mom and saw poverty for the first time. I took a bus ride to a temple, and I remember seeing swarms of children come towards me asking for money. These children had minimal clothing, no shoes, and some were even younger than me at the time. I remember thinking, I want to help them, but I don't know how to. I gave them um, all the money I had at the time, which was just the money that I got from my mom for ice cream. She, I asked her for more, and eventually she gave me some. Well. Um, fast forward 10 years. Um, okay. I'm now 15 years old. I've just finished my freshman year at Gunn. I, uh, can, we, can we go back a lot? Yeah. <laughs> no? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, okay, anyway, um, so I go back to India, and I see something I didn't see on my previous trip. I see technologies everywhere. Um, okay, it's not only now the businessman using his cell phone, it's now a farmer, and the woman cleaning my grandma's house is now using a cell phone. It's everywhere. I remember being on a bus ride, and every single person in the bus was on their cell phone. At bus stops, there would be Wi-Fi connection. Um, the second time I went, I also saw poverty, but however, this time it was tied in with happiness. I saw happiness all around me, and I was so confused as to why these kids with so little were so happy. Thank you. Okay, sorry. I was um, surprised as to why students were so unhappy in high school, just in general in America. I figured, at this point, it's not only just about bringing hope to these students, but it was about teaching these students, teaching students here in the US, how to be happy with so little from students in India. Well, fast forward again to August of that year. I heard about a concert being held, on a, held at Gun. The band playing was called Indian Ocean. All the proceeds were going to the Silicon Valley chapter of an organization called ASHA for Education. I did some research on ASHA, and turns out ASHA was exactly what I was looking for. How do we bring change, and how do we change the lives of un impoverished kids in India for the better? Through education. Robert Hutchins, an educational philosopher, said a quote that really inspired me. The object of education is to prepare the young to educate themselves throughout their lives. This is exactly what ASHA was planning on doing. ASHA for Education is a nonprofit, volunteer based group that together tries to bring hope through education. ASHA actually means hope in Hindi. Together, there's over 65 chapters worldwide that together support over 300 projects in India. I was so excited. I wanted Gun to become our own chapter. However, after doing some more research, I soon realized that ASHA chapters are for college students and young professionals. I contacted different chapters throughout the world, including the Stanford chapter, Silicon Valley, further ones such as Dallas and Berkeley. All were skeptical about helping start a high school chapter. Eventually, with a lot of help from the Stanford chapter, ASHA became our own chap got Gun became our own chapter. We were the first high school chapter of ASHA to ever exist. The mission of Gun ASHA is to help catalyze socioeconomic change in India through education of underprivileged children by engaging high school students from around the world. I wanted Gun ASHA to do more than just fundraise and write off a check to these projects. I wanted a true engagement in which students here could learn from and learn and learn learn from and teach kids in India.
I wanted a true engagement. But the only question was, how could this be done when we were over 10,000 miles apart? While I pondered that question, I contacted over 30 different projects in India, ranging from drug rehab rehabilitation programs in Mumbai, to after school centers in Delhi, to um, orphanages in Bangalore. I was looking for projects that I could visit during the summer. I ended up picking eight different projects, seven located in India, one in Cambodia. I was so excited to visit over that summer. Over a span of two weeks, I traveled to six different, different cities within India. I met children, I met with over a thousand children, and I had the opportunity to meet 60 to 80 new ones every single day. It was truly a unique and life-changing ex experience. Um, after meeting with these ch ch children, I learned so much from this trip. Well, I've, I'm here today to tell you the couple things I learned. The first thing I learned and noticed right away was that we are all, we are not that different. We might wear different clothes and um, get to school in different ways and go live in different houses, but fundamentally kids around the world are the same. We like the same music, we like the same foods, and we watch the same movies. I was surprised to, I was happily surprised to hear a group of seventh grade girls ask me if I love Justin Bieber as much as they do. And I one day found myself in a heated argument or discussion with a group of third grade boys of whether vegetarian pizza was better or non-vegetarian pizza. It sounded like conversations I used to have with my friends when I was their age. The second thing I learned was that all students have similar hopes and dreams. I was under the belief that based off of a child's socioeconomic background would be the deciding factor of what their hopes and dreams would be. However, this was far from the truth. This is Raj. He's a six-year-old boy who lives in Bangalore. He and I had a 45-minute discussion one day just about cars. He told me about all the new BMW models, and he showed me pictures online. He showed me the 7 Series, the 6 Series, all of the series. And um, he knew more about the car that I had at home than I knew about it myself. He showed me pictures and told me one day he was going to own a BMW. And this is Anu. She's a six-year-old who also lives in Bangalore. She, like students here, changed their hopes and dreams by, for young students here, changed their hopes and dreams by the minute. When she saw me taking photographs one day, she asked if she could borrow my camera. She caught on so quickly and started snapping pictures of everything. The pictures turned out really well. And when I asked her what she wanted to be, she smiled at me and she told me she wants to become a photographer. The third thing I learned was that we all make false assumptions about different cultures. There are many people who are under the belief that girls living in extreme poverty want to get married as soon as possible so that they can become financially stable. However, in this group of seventh grade girls, not a single one of them wanted to get married. They all come from extreme poverty they're actually here because they can't go home after school. This is an after school program in Delhi. And these kids come here after school because at home, they simply can't study. Some of them are, live in a house 10 by 20 feet with 10 other people in it. And none of them have electricity. So they come here to learn. And when I asked them what they aspired to be when they're older, they told me you know, doctors and lawyers and dentists and artists. No one mentioned that they wanted to get married. And the final and most important thing I learned and wanted to bring most back was that it does not take a lot to be happy. These girls in these pictures, some of them are orphans and don't have a mom or dad. But there's such a strong sense of sisterhood and fraternity within their community that, they, that just brings them pure joy. This girl on the right, left for you guys, is Asha. She doesn't have a mom or a dad, but she knows at the end of the day she has her didi, or which means sister in Hindi, and her 20 other didis that live with her. I was touched when they started calling me that. So on my two week, or after my two week trip was over, I was on my plane ride home, and I was thinking, how can I bring back the students here, the experience I did without having to fly them down 10,000 miles? 
Well, I came home and a light bulb went on. I saw my dad on a Skype conference call with people in India. He, I asked him, which one do you prefer, you know, Skype conference calls or in-person meetings? He told me he didn't see much of a difference. This is when I realized by using technology, Gun Asha's mission of bringing engagement and education to students could be accomplished. I wanted to empower these kids with both computers and Skype so that they could, so that we could share our lives and experiences with one another. So what does Gun Asha do? We first start by um, identifying projects or you could bring them to us. Next, we raise money so that they can get you know, the basic necessities to live along with a computer and Skype and a Wi-Fi connection. Next, we then we go to the projects, we set up these um, monitors, we set up the Skype so that they can Skype with us and create buddy programs. Any student in the world can become a Skype buddy by raising money and donating anywhere between $10 to $330 for a student. At $10, you can provide one child in India with food for a whole entire month. And for $330, you can provide a student with everything that they need for a whole entire year, including food, education, a source of fun, a place to stay. So my big hope with Ash, Gun Asha is that we get three things accomplished. One, we bring, the, we bring the children in India the necessities they need to survive. Two, we create programs here that we can become mentors to these students and share our lives with them. And three, for students in India to be able to teach us here how to enjoy the simple things in life. So before I leave, I'm going to show you some aspirations of the girls I met this summer. This girl is named Asha. One day she wants to become a doctor, and she also loves the color pink. This is Bagri. One day she wants to become a teacher, and she also likes to help kids, or she likes to help children. This is Meghna. She wants to become, her goal in life is to become a police officer. And this is Navidia. Her goal in life is to study well and become a nice doctor one day. And finally, this is Krishna. As you can probably tell from this drawing, she wants to become an artist one day. And from the looks of it, she's going to become quite a successful one. I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity and time to listen to me tell you about these stories of these young children I met in India this summer. Any questions? No. Okay, thank you.